Uh, hello again to everyone. Um, today I am going to introduce one uh, project that is um, been under development for a few years by our company. And um, before that, I want to say that it's my first presentation in English. Actually, I've done a lot in uh, my native language in Russian, but it's my first uh, in English and I'm very excited to do it. Uh, so because of that, and because you probably don't know me, I want to introduce myself. My name is, as I've already, or I haven't uh, told, uh, my name is Dmitry uh, Stolyarov, and I am CTO and co-founder of Flant. We are middle-sized company from, from Russia. Um, we are 12 years old. And basically we are working in the SOE DevOps field. And um, for last years, I've been uh, probably known for being a POCS person for Kubernetes in the, in the Russian speaking community. Okay, that's a short story about me. Um, um, short story about Verf is um, that it's the name for the shipyard in Russian. And actually it's not the Russian word, it's a Dutch word. Um, so it came into Russian uh, uh, and we use Russian and probably Dutch pronunciation. And the first letter, it's not wo, it's v, verf. Okay, uh, but before I will proceed with, um, with um, verf, I want to as fast as possible to go through GitOps uh, as I understand it, as probably my company understand it. And then I want to make some kind of a comparison with what we do in verf. And this, this will, be, uh, will give me ability to explain what the difference is and what you, um, why and when it might be useful. Okay, uh, so if we talk of, um, I will go as fast as possible. So sorry if I will, you know, <laughs> if you feel that, that I'm going too fast, but I think I'm talking about obvious things. So uh, let's go on. So the first picture that arises um, in my head when I hear GitOps is, um, uh, that we have Git repository and we have some kind of, you know, YAML files uh, describing a state for Kubernetes because um, in my experience, I work 100% of the time with Kubernetes. Of course, we have a lot of other things, but, you know, I think um, the Kubernetes is the main target for GitOps is just my, you know, my, my point of view, uh, my target. Uh, so we have GitOps with uh, all uh, YAML manifest for Kubernetes, and of course we, has, we have Kubernetes, and of course we have uh, objects in Kubernetes, we have ingress, we have few deployments, and we have, for example, stateful set with uh, Redis. And we have um, GitOps op operator, which is responsible for syncing uh, the state, which is responsible for um, getting Kubernetes to the desired state. And uh, if some user will change anything in Kubernetes, of course, uh, GitOps operator will fix it. And this makes kind of a um, small fans, which motivates users not to get, uh, you know, directly to Kubernetes, but go to the source of truth. And um, instead of building the small fans, we can make actually the real one, like the real wall uh, by not giving access to the user to, um, by, by not giving access to user to the Kubernetes or uh, make kind of transparent wall with a read-only access, but that's not important. Important part is that uh, the only way in is of course Git. Okay, uh, and of course we have Docker registry and if new image arrives in Docker registry, um, our operator uh, make appropriate change into Kubernetes. Uh, so that's kind of the basic, basic of the basic. Um, and um, of course, we have a lot of exciting, beautiful, perfect things. Um, and um, specifically, um, determinism and idempotency is probably the, the kind of the most important, at least I feel that way. Okay, uh, but um, what we compare GitOps with? And uh, what I compare GitOps with is mainly the thing that is called, I know that we works uh, call it CI ops, and uh, it's basically anti-pattern for uh, GitOps. 
and how it looks. Uh, we also have Git, but that's time it's Git for the application. Uh, and because of that, it has source code, it has Docker file, it has probably Helm chart or something like Helm chart, you know the names, and probably it has some kind of tests. Okay, and we have pipeline. And in this pipeline, we surely have build uh, as, a, as a step. And uh, what this step does, it basically builds the Docker image from source code and Docker file. Yes, it's kind of the basic stuff we all do. And probably we have some kind of unit-like test. It's not unit, but it's unit-like. Um, uh, probably after that, we push image to the Docker registry. Probably after that, we use using Helm or using, I don't know, JSONnet, kubectl, whatever, um, apply our manifests, render ma our manifest and apply them to the Kubernetes API. And to be able to do this, we probably feed uh, some data from uh, build and uh, build and publish stage with uh, with the tags of Docker images into this Helm uh, chart or whatever. Okay, um, then we probably run end-to-end -end test and everything. if everything goes well, we probably um, deploy to production. That's uh, kind of uh, CI ops explain in two minutes. Uh, and uh, let's just quickly evaluate uh, how it performs. Uh, first of all, uh, we want to question, uh, is, it, um, is it deterministic? How about what, what's going on with determinism? And what I see in a lot of um, implementation of this flow, and probably not only I see, uh, is that uh, the building of Docker image, even we have Docker file and source code, everything in Git repository committed and um, w w still we have a lot of external dependencies. We, 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 we always try to freeze all our dependencies in the Git, but same time there is no guarantee that, that rebuilding our image will give the same results. So, Basically, builds are not deterministic in generally, and it's not guaranteed. Uh, same goes with idempotency. And um, first of all, uh, builds are not idempotent because you know there is no guarantee that after some time, some dependency will not be abandoned or broken, and the rebuild will just break as as a result. And the other problem lies usually in the tagging stage when we tag Docker images because sometimes we use um, CI job IDs to tag Docker images. Sometimes we use some information from Git, but it's there is no kind of basic fundamental guarantee that uh, it will be idempotent. And for the same content in the Git, we will have the same tag, the same image. And I think that two of these problems are kind of the most fundamental for the, for the all, uh, all this pipeline. And um, if we talk about deploy stage, uh, Helm is already broken because it's fed by not, by not repeatable, uh, by not reproducible things. So it will not give you reproducible result. And Helm also has another problem that it's not very good at providing feedback because Usually, it just renders something into Kubernetes API, and then we just hope that everything will go a uh, good way. So um, basically, we don't have any kind of convergence. And um, if we talk about audit, yes, we have all history of our change in changes in Git, but because um, conversion from Git to the images, conversion from Git to the Kubernetes is not deterministic, um, everything breaks and basically we have good history um, in Git and random or chaotic results uh, in registry in Kubernetes. Uh, I will not <laughs> even talk about observability because in this kind of scenario, we don't have anything we have to, <laughs> going back to audit, we have to you know go through all the CI jobs. We, go, we have to go, uh, through all the dependencies, I, and we never know what 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 change, what really what what the change really is. 
Uh, speaking about security, the main kind of concern is that our CI system has access to the uh, Kubernetes API. I think that it's not a very big problem, but I will talk about it a little bit later. And uh, if we talk about automation, we don't have automation uh, because uh, the main idea of automation is not having human interaction. And this pipeline, this workflow usually <laughs> requires, because it's broken in a lot of places, fundamentally broken, it usually requires a lot of, a lot of effort uh, to fix it, to, you know, uh, to make it working. Um, okay. So if we compare GitOps to CIOps, the difference is obvious and everything, uh, like GitOps is perfect, CIOps is just bad. But I want to uh, look at a bit bigger picture. And for me, the bigger picture looks like this. Uh, we have, yes, we have GitOps part. And um, actually on GitOps part, we have probably multiple branches and we have probably multiple clusters for staging and production, but that's not um, the main. And I, I will I will just simplify the picture, you know, to, to be able to fit it into the into the slide. But um, uh, we have uh, the main the main extra thing we have we have another Git with the application. Um, it's application repository. So we have cluster Git and application Git, and. Um, Basically, what we have is the same stages in CI. So it's same build, same kind of unit test, same uh, publishing. Uh, the deploy differs because instead of deploying directly to Kubernetes, we, um, of course, we do kind of uh, direct or indirect um, git commit to the, uh, to the uh, cluster repo. And um, uh, one small problem, Ah, but it's not important and I will try to go fast. So um, while deploying to production, we might make another commit to production, but of course better uh, is just to merge staging to production. And uh, I think that kind of problem that bothers me most of the time is that this part, the GitOps part is perfect. But if we look at the kind of whole picture uh, because of the input into GitOps is broken. We kind of have all the, all the result broken because we can't track the change fully from uh, application repository to the, to the production, to, to the operation uh, part. And uh, if we compare GitOps to CIOps, uh, the difference is obvious, but if we compare pipeline build that upon GitOps, I want to question uh, how good it is. Um, and I think it's almost as bad as CIOps, but of course it's <laughs> much better because, because it has GitOps at the end and we have all our changes you know, committed and having history. Um, back to the verve. What 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 we actually do in verve? Uh, we are trying. Mm, the key challenge for us is to solve this build and publish problem in such a way that it will be that it will work. <laughs> and um, I will go fast through things we have done and we achieved. So basically in Verve, we done uh, just two things. First of all, we fixed uh, building and publishing part and we have done it by um, integrating building process with the Git history. So basically all builds are uh, determined by the Git history and by the uh, actually by the registry state. So we can kind of combine the history of builds and the history of change in the uh, deterministic builds. So on the build change on the build stage, we have uh, reproducible and deterministic builds. Um, I've already told that they are. Uh, determined by by um, uh, Git history and um, previous previous builds, and um, 
you basically can rerun the build stage as many times as you want and if you will always have the same result and basically once built um, uh, nothing new will be ever built for this commit and only something new will be built only if you change something and as a bonus we have uh, distributed builds so you uh, can run build from any worker or for any from any um, from anywhere and get the same result uh, each time. On the tagging part, we have um, basically same thing. We have reproducible and deterministic tags, and we have immutable. Uh, sorry, uh, idempotent uh, tags, and we achieve that by um, using kind of content-based. It's not fully content-based. It's actually Git history-based, but um, we use content-based, you can call it content-based strategy to achieve that. Um, actually, there are a lot of things going on under the hood, uh, but I can't explain them um, now. <laughs> if you are interested, you can read uh, on the Verve uh, site, but like the main result, it's just working. Okay, the, the second thing we fixed is a deploy part. And first of all, we fixed a few things in the Helm. We actually, we utilize Helm internally. And um, we kind of make the better three-bay merge. And um, we've done a few other things to make working with Helm more reliable, more just better. Uh, and we have, we have kind of comparison table on the site. So if you're interested, you can, uh, look, and uh, I think that it's the most important part is that we implemented, uh, we added a good feedback into the helm. Uh, so the ba basically the project is called KubeDoc, and um, Verve compiles into Helm and KubeDoc and kind of uh, combines them. Um, and what happens is uh, that after rendering everything to Kubernetes, KubeDoc follows all the deployments and all the rollout process and just waits till everything will be converged to the desired state and then exits with a zero code or exit with a non-zero code if uh, it's failed. Uh, so basically we have a good feedback uh, on, the, on, the deploy, uh, on the deploy stage and we, we feed all the logs, all what's going on during this stage. And because at the previous um, slide, we fixed build and publish process and we now feed uh, reliable and uh, repeatable information into the deploy stage. We were able to make um, deploy using Helm into, I call it reliable converge. So kind of each time we have the same result. We have three main commands, verve build, verve publish and verve deploy. And you can use, instead of using them, you can use just one verve build and publish and verve deploy, or you can use just one command verve converge. And basically it just makes the desired state of the cluster and the registry as it should be, as it defined in Git. So um, how it kind of works. Of course, we have Kubernetes Docker registry and uh, Git repository. In Git repository, we have, we may have, multiple applications. In my example, it's front-end, back-end, and for both of them, we have different um, you know, source bases and we have uh, different Docker files. We also have Docker file for, for building Redis and we have a uh, Helm chart, you know, uh, why. And we have Verve and um, when we run it first time, it builds all the images and um, converts Kubernetes to the desired state. So, um, on the first commit, yeah, uh, on, on the first commit in the Git repository, on, on the first run on the first commit, uh, Verve does kind of initial setup. Then uh, if you rerun on the same commit Verve as many times as you want, all the time uh, Verve will check the content of the registry and he knows uh, that everything is okay and will check the state of the cluster. Everything is okay and it's uh, just exit with no change. If someone will, change something in the Kubernetes. Of course, um, 
on the next rerun, uh, Verve will detect it and fix it back, running on the same commit. And it makes kind of, you know, fans, but we prefer this type of offense when, when it's read-only access and we force user to the, to the um, single source of truth. Okay, um, if we add another commit, which changes only uh, source code of uh, front end, what happens is actually Verve builds one extra image, two other are the same and changed only one deployment, which, which should be changed. If um, we had another commit changing something in Helm chart, no images will be built, but if we change in this Helm chart, the definition of uh, ingress, of course, it, ingress. Another, another minute or so, just to, yeah, to, to, yeah, to close up. Yeah, I finish in one minute. No okay, perfect. so basically we can, um, we can execute verb in old commit and the difference between like the last and old is changes in the front end and how child. So if we run there, will not rebuild images, it will just uh, just apply the new state. Okay, so basically, Verve is a kind of tool that converts the registry state to the desired and the Kubernetes state to the desired and does it in a deterministic, uh, idempotent, uh, repeatable way. So that's kind of the main uh, the main thing we have achieved. You can add as many commits, re uh, repeat the separation. Verve supports any things like merge request. You can even do in some cases rebase, and it will and will work. Okay, so if we fastly evaluate what's going on, we fixed idempotency and uh, determinism of the of the whole thing. So we make it work. And because of that, we can rely on the Git history of the application repository. And because of that, because having kind of good converge, yes, a state may drift and probably we have to work on this, but you know, we, we make a step um, into the right direction. Of course, observability and security is not super because, because we still have access for the CI system to the Kubernetes cluster. Okay, if we compare CI ops uh, to Verve, uh, of course, uh, they look completely same, but because one is um, repeatable and another is not, you know, uh, if we compare, compare Verve to the whole pipeline, we see, you know, the difference because Verve has reliable, repeatable build and publish, and GitOps has reliable, repeatable, deterministic convergence. And um, so that's it. Um, that's all I want uh, to present to you. Uh, basically, uh, I will be extremely happy if you try Verf. And uh, as I see it for now, the best, you know, step, step the best path for us will be trying to use GitOps as a as a destination for the for the um, as as a, as a final destination as a step. Uh, That's amazing. I, I, okay. I, I, think it, I think it came across clearly, and, and I, I just want to pat you on the back that you know for your first presentation in English that was amazing. That was amazing. Thank, thank it, you it, very much. Absolutely. If you didn't tell us that, I would I would have never assumed. Um, and I think my my key really takeaway, I think my key takeaway from your talk today was, uh, GitOps is good and CI ops is bad. <laughs> uh, but you can fix CI ops if you make it right. Yes, yes, yes. So so for the folks listening, uh, uh, try out Worth. Um, thank you, Dimitri.